Hello everyone. On this Holy Thursday, a very important day in the life of the church year, I'd like to tell you two stories. So I'm going to tell you one, we'll stop, and then if you want to watch the other one later, you can, or you can just go right on to the next one. The first story I'm going to tell you is the story of the Passover. And the story of the Passover is this. Thousands of years ago, God's people were slaves in Egypt, and the Pharaoh was in charge of them. And the Pharaoh mistreated them, and God saw this and was not happy with it. So he called this man named Moses and told Moses, you go and tell the Pharaoh to set my people free. And Moses went and said to the Pharaoh, our God says, set my people free. And Pharaoh said, your gods, nobody, you guys are slaves. I don't care about your God. And he says, I'm not going to set them free. And so God, Moses went back to God and said, he's not going to set them free. And God said, well, tell him this. If he doesn't set them free, I'm going to turn all the water that the Egyptians use into blood. And they won't have any water to drink. And God does it. And the Pharaoh says, I'm not going to let them go. They're still my slaves. And so Moses goes back and nine more times the Pharaoh won't let the people go. And there, were, there was a plague. A plague is like a terrible thing that happens, sort of like COVID-19 right now is terrible. But it's that, um, uh, that there was a plague of locusts, which are bugs that came and ate all the crops, and gnats that came and were all over the people and all kinds of things, and he wouldn't let him go. So finally God says, this guy needs to be shown that I am in charge. And so God said to Moses, tell all the Jewish people who were God's people that tonight they are to pack their things and that tonight an angel will come over their houses. And if they do what I say, the angel will do no harm to them. But if they don't do what I say, the angel will bring death to the house. So the people all gathered together and Moses told them, go out and get a lamb and prepare the lamb for dinner. And everyone stay in your house, don't go outside, but put the blood of the lamb on the doorpost and the angel will know not to come and hurt your family. So the people did this and the angel didn't hurt their families, but he killed the firstborn of each house of the Egyptians who wouldn't let the slaves go. Well, this brought the Egyptians and to say to the Jewish people, get out of our country. And they gave him gold and money and said, just get out, get away, leave us alone. And so the Israelites set out, the Israelites are the Jewish people, they set out and they're ready to leave Egypt and the Pharaoh says, oh no, what are we doing? We're letting all our slaves go. And he sends an army to go and kill them or bring them back. And the, and the Israelites get to the Red Sea, the edge of the Red Sea, and they're trapped with this army coming. And the army's coming, and when they come, the people are so afraid, and God says to Moses, take your staff, which is a stick, and hold it out, and the waters of the Red Sea Part it so that there was dry land and the Israelites got through safe to the other side. And as the Egyptians were catching up with them, when the last Israelite got through the water, the waters flowed back and the Israelite army was drowned and the people were free. Now, when God told them to do all this, he said to them then, every year at the time that this happened, which is roughly in April, when the first full moon of the spring comes about, you are to remember this and it's called Passover. The feast is called Passover. So every year, what I want you to do then is you are to have a celebration of this event that happened. You're to celebrate that you were set free from slavery and that you were gonna be headed into a new land. And it will be your own land, and that land is, is Israel, that they would finally come to after 40 years in the desert. So every year, they would have a meal, and the meal would consist of 
a lamb that was sacrificed at the temple, and then they brought it home and cooked it and prepared it. And there were other things that they ate with the meal that reminded them of the story. So for example, there was this type of, of um, sort of a, I guess it, you'd say it's sort of like a, a spice that they would eat and it was red. So it reminded of them of the bricks that they had to make when they were slaves in Egypt. And then they would eat bread that would remind them of the manna that fell down from heaven when they thought that God wouldn't feed them in the desert. And God made this manna, which was like a bread, fall down from heaven. And they would tell the story of this meal every year. And it was a big celebration. And it would begin with the youngest kid in the family saying to the father, Father, why is tonight different than every other night? And he would say, because of what God has done, and he would tell the story that I have just told you about how God set them free from slavery. And with grateful hearts, they would pray together, and then they would say a prayer thanking God for the gift of the bread, which they had received, and they would eat the bread. And then the father would take a cup of wine, and he would say, a prayer thanking God for the wine of sorrow and the wine of joy. That wine is a sign both of sorrow if people get drunk and get mean, but also it's a sign of joy when people drink it properly and are happy and rejoice. And so people will say, oh, we're having wine for dinner because it's special tonight. And so that is that time. And so they would give thanks to God with that. So that is the end of this first story. Now I'm gonna stop and we'll come back and we'll do a second story.